It's a nice thing to have in the garage. Should we actually see if this works? Hi guys, Retro Tech Ralph here. I've got an unboxing. This is this is a, like me. I buy stuff when it's on offer and it's been sat on the shelf for months. And with the recent passing of, of Sir Clive Sinclair, I think it's only fair that I dig this out and start to do something with this. So this is the Sinclair ZX81. I never had one of these growing up. I went straight from an Atari 2600 to a Spectrum 48K, the rubber keyed version. Never had one of these. This was bought on, on eBay about 35, 40 quid, something like that, boxed as it is. I know there's faults with it. So the first part of this is gonna to have to be repairing the faults that get this working. So I'll go through that in a second. It is boxed, it's not too, too bad there. There's the wear marks or whatever, pen over here. I don't think it comes with a 16K RAM pack plus cassette, but 29 pound for this, that's, that's dirt cheap that. So rip down the side there. There's nothing much I can do about that apart from maybe put some try and colour things on, even reprint this side and stick it over. It's not the best box ever, but it does. I think actually I know there's a guy who does repro reproduction boxes on eBay. There's um, there was and I wish I'd done a video for it, which was the um, big six switch Woody. Uh, Atari 2600 and the, the theater, theater in actually opening a box to get a box for putting stuff in is amazing If I can find it, if it does do one, I will probably change this one anyway So it's nice enough. Yeah, I've had cell tape over top of here anyway, but that's this isn't about the box So let's get this out I have seen worse out there a lot worse. So this is the Sinclair polystyrene hooray so top off right here is the issue and you can see that where these are being stored the plastics on the cable it, it melts itself with the actual polystyrene but if you can see on here I have a um I am not going to try it with this I don't know if this actually does work or not there's no plug on the end anyway so I need to do something with this beforehand anyway so this comes with this didn't come with this so ignore that for a second it comes with a tape <clears throat> mm -hmm. gazetteer and then vu file okay okay this has got something to play when it actually does if it actually works so look at the zx81 i'm going to do with a bit of a clean this like i said this has been sat in here doing absolutely nothing for months i have feet on top of feet for some reason so I can remove them, get them back down to the original one. So I've not got enough feet to actually order. Screw-wise, is it just two that hold this together? Okay, this did uh, C13. No idea. There's a little red board inside there. I don't know if that means something or not. I think it possibly does. But again, don't know if this works or not. I don't know if there's something missing from there either. Looks like it probably is. I mean, the keyboard, I don't know. It's just a touch, touch, yeah. It, it feels horrible like you is it is it is it is it but there's also a line across here so i might have to buy a new one of these but we will test this eventually anyway hmm the power brick right this looks like an original power brick it's a uk 700 if i can see if i can find one no because it's a barrel connector on the on the other one on the, the zx spectrums so it's not one of these, yeah, headphone socket ones. Hence, that's why I've got a couple of cables. One of them is just a, yeah, three and a half inch, oh, three and a half millimeter, sorry. Keep doing that. Um, mono jack, which is exactly the same as what goes on. Exactly the same. And powers up into, which is quite strange because, yeah, earphone socket, microphone socket, Power socket, why would you do that? They're all mono sockets. Right, so this 
is going to replace it. I did actually buy a second. Well, actually, I bought one that has got a, um, a, a connector on the end for that socket with one of these on the end, which I could have used that anyway, but I've got two of these from work. They're just throwing them away. They would have been cut off at the end. So we will use this as a new power cable for this. I know it doesn't look exactly the same. You've got two cables there and that's got a rounder one. I'm not bothered. It's fine. It will work. So my first job is, oh, I have no feet on here, is to get inside this, possibly change the plug. Well, actually fit a plug. I have to find one first. I think I might have got one in one of my junk boxes behind me. Yeah, this is... Uh, th mm, okay. Polystyrene out, out of the way. Spectrum, let's keep you over there and the tape up there. So I've now tangled up on my own cables. <sighs> so let me have a look why this has done this. We might be interested to know why. Oh, hello. Why? Oh, I, I assume that somebody a long time ago has attempted to repair. I don't find that as a repair because they are both touching each other. They're not now, but you know, I'm not happy with that. So let me get inside here. I think I can't see inside there. Let me get a torch to shine inside the hole. They are Phillips screws, all three of them. So let me get a screwdriver the Phillips bit on the end and get up this open and see if I can replace this cable. I don't really need to clean this cable to be honest. It's a little bit grubby and stuff, but this is perfectly COVID free while it's like, been, it's been stuck in here for so long. I mean, I could potentially do something with that. Put some hot glue between just to test, but I think it's probably best just, just stopping with this and just repairing this straight away before we start plugging it into that. Now, plug socket is almost fitted onto here. Found one in the junk box. Simple enough, I always wanted to do a video on how to change a plug because it's, it's one of these generational things. I mean, I'm getting quite close to 50. And yeah, it was kind of the thing you, you did. You, you, you put plugs on things in the 70s. I don't know why, but you did. But it's an easy enough thing to do. Blue wire to there, brown wire to there. Brown or the red wire goes up to that side. So if it's the red, black, that goes red to the fuse, black to the negative. If it's the old fashioned brown and, and blue one, brown goes to the fuse, blue goes there, and then the green, yellow, or green and yellow goes to the earth. This doesn't have an earth. So if that's only a cable strain that's been part of this socket, holds everything in place, done. It, it, it's easy. This is the problem with why I didn't want to do a video on doing a plug socket. I think my audience know how to do this, or well, there's a certain age for my, um, my audience that really, it's teaching your grandmother to suck eggs, shall we say. She knows what she's doing. She knows how she's, she's supposed to be doing it. So yeah, we've um, plugged on there. I'm not gonna plug it in yet. I need a screwdriver that goes down that hole and undoes. That is too wrong size. It's too wide to get down. So we'll three screws in. I mean, this could be absolutely black inside. This could already be blown up. This could be anything and everything. That's why the, the, the plug socket, might, no, yeah, the plug might have been removed. I don't know. If it is, then I've, I can, I have got a power supply that I can use, I think. It's only nine volts anyway, so it's just chucking nine volts through this, but I'd rather do original hardware, powerware, if it works. There's two, there's three. So, no problem with capacitors on this, shocking me or anything, if there's anything in here, because it's been probably been unplugged for, yeah, Lord knows how many years. So top come off, bottom come off. Keep this right around there. I'll guess the top comes off, but it doesn't seem to want to. The bottom wants to come off. Okay, there it goes. So let's take that strain relief off of there. So the bottom bit comes off. I still need to get this top bit out of there. So what's that stuck on? Ah, it's just stuck on the top with some foam. Right, the capacitor there looks good for the age. But actually, that look, feels loose. I'm not quite happy with that. Hmm, the power supply looks perfectly fine. It doesn't seem to have been blown or anything. Diodes on there look fine. So it looks like it should be able to run. Now, all I need to do 
is figuring out which one of these cables on here is the centre pin. That I am certain goes to the red, which is there, and then the black, the outer, will go into that pin there. So I need to do a... No, not that pin there. That pin there. So we're talking centre, outer. So positive will go off to diodes and gubbins and stuff. I'm not entirely certain with that. I might re do that if I've got another capacitor at that size 200 ultrafarad 16 volts I've got one of them I, I've definitely got one of them I can replace that with it's just the it just seems a bit too much like it's it's not loose on the board as you'll be able to tell it but I think it's loose inside this so tidy up I'm gonna redo that I'm actually even going to redo that a little bit as well. I, mean, I might just refloat all the solder and all these joints because it is getting old. There is a little bit of wobble there as well. So I think maybe, yeah, I'm going to refloat all the solder on here so it makes it lots a lot more solid. Yeah, it's an issue three, whatever that is. Z Tran Limited Telex. But I'd rather have this working perfect instead of bodged up. So we'll tinker around. Get this resoldered, get a new cable fitted on, new capacitor fitted as well. Half an hour later, the power supply not only has its own plug socket, it has its own cable now, properly on. I've hot glued onto here as well to give it a bit more strain relief. Got kept the original strain relief. If you ever do this, they are moulded to the cable, these, but you can cut either side, drill through. Just take your time, small drill bit, cut your time drill all the way through to try and make a hole and force the cable through. It, I'd like to do it on certain things. If you can't actually get it through, it's just too tight, little dropper, dropper oil in there, and it helps lubricate to get through a little bit. Also on the bottom of here, that is really nice, clean, done. All that gunk and goo gone, everything has been re-soldered, re-flowed. I was going to change the capacitor, but I haven't got one. Surprisingly, I haven't got a tooth 2216 volt, and I don't know why. So, this is now ready to go back in. I've even put back on some new feet on here. These are neoprene, single-sided, sticky parts. I haven't got any rubber ones anywhere, but these will do absolutely fine. No problem on grip. So, let's have a look here. What do we have here? So that part there, it went wrapped around. There's a bit of strain relief around that and sank in there. The cable for this, I've got the strain relief with the glue, but I need this in there as well. So I'm gonna put a little bit extra in there. Don't need too much, I don't think. Actually, maybe I can put a little bit in there. And that will just slot down into there. It gives it the impression that it was meant to be all along. Well, I think it does anyway. And I like trying to keep things looking as original as possible, even if it's not going to be as original as possible. That is a really good down there, doesn't it? Hmm. This is the problem with there being a round cable and a uh, flat part there. I really need to force that in. Ah. This may be a slight problem. Let's try the other way around. Just push it through. No. Nope. I could have quite easily just knotted this on the corner and just pushed it in. That would have been acceptable enough as well. So. Let's try and get that down there. Hmm. Yeah, that slot, the original slot was meant for the cable that was side by side, not for where I've put the cable in. It will go, I know it will go. Just need to manipulate a little bit to get this thing in. There we go, it's going now, there we go. It's going down, I could get a screwdriver possibly, a wider one to try and give me a little bit more purchase to push down. Both sides, there we go, perfect. Perfect, you'd never, apart from the cable, you'd never ever know that I've been in here. So that goes on there. So that, that, surprisingly, the pad on top of there is actually still sticky. Which is weird. 
think that goes, yeah, it goes that way because there's one two, and two screws. And this will wedge itself in place on the top, holding it very solid. Now, where did I put that last screwdriver? I've had to tidy up, and for some reason, I've put the things I need out of the way. So, are you in there? This definitely isn't the screwdriver for this. I'd rather test this with the actual back on so I don't go bang. No, I don't have a decent screwdriver to fit in there. These, these ones here are too big. Okay, we're going to have to carry on using maybe one of these. Yeah, flathead on a posi drive doesn't does work a lot of times. Have a look. Nope, that's moved. It's just trying to get the right blade in. Now, we'll be able to find a screwdriver somewhere. It's just it's quite deep in to get it, and most stuff from the 80s is always over-engineered. I mean, if you ever got a, a Acorn Electron, I've got a video of me stripping down the. The, the interface on the back and it's absolutely ridiculous the amount of um, engineering on that to hold an interface on the back of a Acorn Electron. Right, that's in place. That's pretty solid. New cable on there, done. I was actually considering not using the full length of this cable. However, the length of the original cable was about that much longer. So, yeah. Now what I need to do is I need to plug this in, get the multimeter out, start testing this and seeing what voltage. I need 9 volts from this, so it will be positive, negative, this is the way around. DC, yeah we'll, we'll sort that out in a second or two, but we'll get this tested before it goes anywhere near the actual ZX81. Multimeter's ready, power supply's here. I'm going to plug this in for the first time and turn on. Well, that's kind of disappointing. I was hoping to film something go bang. Right, let's try. For some reason, it's going. There's a tiny voltage in here. Give me nine volts. Oh, no, nope, it's all right. Fell off. Whoa. Why is that 16 volts? Hmm. I may not be um, plugging this in today. Yeah, that's definitely 16.4 volts. Why is this running so much? Can't keep that on. 16 and a half volts, that's not right. Not warm. So we are seven volts, seven and a half volts over what we need. I know the, the kind of ones have, yeah, they, they, they're very random on a lot of the voltages, but 16 and a half volts, I'm not happy with that. I'm going to try another one. I'm going to try another power supply for the Spectrum ones. Now I have another old fashioned yeah, one of these with a power supply that I might consider using. I set it to 90. There's actually variable um, sections on the back of it, but I'm going to try. See, that's 9.332 volts. That's within reg that the. I think I'd have made that drop then. So 9.65, 9.7, that was me, on the black section. So 9.6 volts is easily culpable with a regulator that should be inside there. 16, I don't know. I'll have to see. So let's remove that. Should we try and plug it in? Yeah, give me a second, just tidy up. 
Now, I've been testing and I've been faffing and power supply, don't know. The other power supply I've got is a Tandy one and to be honest, it is old and it's getting warm. But I've been testing this for a little while and for some reason, I, I, can, I can barely tune something into the TV. But it's kind of is and isn't working. But this was the whole thing about this. It wasn't the first part of fixing this up. It was getting that thing fixed. And it's 16 volts. I've, the, the niddling thing in the back of my head is, one, that's not going in right. Two, that isn't the right connector, I know. But I just can't get it out of my head that maybe 16 volts running through this into here has either blown this thing up done something to it. I've just lost the signal completely now. I think the socket's come out of there. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting a signal. I can't show it because it'll just be so noisy with the, the static on it. It's it's not a spectrum picture. It doesn't say welcome to whatever or, or copyright such and such. But it just keeps... I'm not getting the right thing for it. It's not tuning in right. So something's not right with this. So that's fine. What I want to do because that's in there and it was getting a picture. I need to try this. This has to be done. So I'm gonna put the 16 volt into the here and see what happens. I'm hoping nothing, but it, worst case it'll blow voltage red later, which needs to replace and do. All right, that's not done anything. The power supply is on, and the TV's not really done anything. It's not the same as before. That's me. That's the wrong place because that is, like I said, that isn't the right thing for this. I'm trying to retune. 36 to 35 is the frequency I'm, I'm getting something at. Something was there at 35. I mean, this is prime for a composite mod to make it a little easier. It is. Coping with 16 volts. It's like I am using the wrong connector for the cable. For some reason it was colour then. Why would they have colour on his X81? You fool. Right, so let me go a bit further down. It might actually be an, a shadow on 36, 35. No. We definitely have a fault with this. To run the power supply through, it's, it definitely ghosts on something on 36. Let's try for 35 again. It's getting a full signal, so it is, the TV is showing there's a full signal. It's got some sort of quality signal coming through. Problem is, is it this? Well, it's got to be this, there can't be anything else in here. And I can't fine tune this like an old television. Oh, this is a pain. So the, the, the actual voltage is fine for a moment. There's nothing heat, nothing heat wise. Taking out does give me fine. It's oh, it's got a white screen now. What the hell is this thing doing? What is it giving me? And then the TVs nowadays, modern TV ish, well, because mine isn't that that, but it is enough, goes black. So that's not really helping. Okay, so power supply is being refurbed and I'll look into whether or not 16 volts is okay or if I've just blown up 1k of memory or whether or not there is something else wrong with this. I'm trying to look on these screws here. There's a, a tiny bit of silver I can see on the edge of that screw. Potentially that has been worn as well. I do hope that these feet don't need to be cut to fully come off. Otherwise, yeah, you put in, well, I've, I've got to get 10 feet off anyway, haven't I? So, those ones, but that's for another video. Anyway, so power supply is potentially working, potentially going to blow this up, being seven volts higher than what it's supposed to be. So we'll, we'll work on this on another day. So with that in mind, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, follow me on social media, and I'll see you in another video. Bye for now.